Mike Diaz. Uh, good to be back. Um, you know, in game week mode of, of operation. Um, we've had a, a really, really good training camp. I feel like our team uh, has developed. Uh, I know our team chemistry has developed a lot, and these guys uh, enjoy being around one another, and it's um, as, as close of a team as, as I've been around. So excited for that. Uh, we, we do know that obviously we got to play a football game though in five days and um, you know Louisiana Tech very well coached uh, very experienced quarterback um, you know I know coach coach Holtz uh, will we'll have those guys uh, fired up and, and ready to play and give us their best shot uh, so we got to be at our best as well um, a couple guys that, that will not play in the game uh, Josh Moore has been suspended uh, for the game, uh, Kirk Johnson, Reese Moore, Jarrett Smith, and Daniel Young uh, will all not play uh, in the game due to injury. Uh, and we are, Gerald Wilbon tweaked his knee in, in warm ups or something and uh, having a hard time getting the swelling down. But um, he's kind of day to day, but uh, would not practice today if, if we had to practice. Questions? Coach, uh, the level of concern at the running back position, and what, what can you uh, tell us about Keontae Ingram? Um, level of concern is high. <laughs> um, you know, we were supposed to uh, have five scholarship running backs, um, and if they all stayed healthy, we would have had five. And obviously, uh, Darian Brown uh, got here two days ago. Uh, he's doing great, but but will not play this season. Uh, and then you get Kirk and Danny both going down with season ending, or not season ending, uh, training camp ending, or you know a good four to six weeks uh, worth of injury. And now you're left with Keontae and and Jordan, and Keontae goes and you know twists his knee up. And um, but he's he's doing well. Uh, Jordan still fighting uh, some residual effects from a, a sports hernia surgery that he had in high school. So that flares up on him from time to time. Um, and then uh, Roshan Johnson has, has played, um, you know, tailback for about the last six, seven days um, of practice just to, to get us up. Because right now we've, you know, that would be in case of emergency break glass, but you know, running back's a violent position. Uh, the season didn't start as you planned the first two years. Do you see any common denominators in the losses to Maryland that you fixed for this season? No, I mean, it's just every, every year is different. Every team is different in terms of their um, – their psyche, um, so no, they're, they're all different. I will tell you, we have the, the one area we have adjusted uh, the most um, has been centered around the fact that we start classes the Wednesday before the, the game. Really very, very few schools uh, have that issue, and I, I called a lot of my, my colleagues, um, I remember asking, Coach Sweeney at, at Clemson. I said, "Well, hey, what do you, what do, you do? Our, our every day we every year, you know, our, our practice on the first day of classes is, is not real good." And he goes, "Oh, I never practice on the first day of classes." I said, "Well, what if classes start the, the week of the game?" He said, "I've been a head coach. I don't know how long Dabo has been. Eight, nine years." He goes, "It's never happened." So he, it was. It's a very unique situation here at Texas, and one that um, we're handling uh, a little bit better with our schedule. We'll, we'll practice at night this entire week at 6.30. So these guys get off of class at 2, and uh, especially that first day, and they'll have a few hours kind of to get that first day out of their system. you know why, that worked, why you lost those two games in retrospect? Why do you still like uh, we didn't We didn't play good enough. Uh, Coach, just one quick uh, injury one before I get to the main question. Uh, Zach Shockerford, uh, what's going on with him? Practice full uh, yesterday, and obviously today is an off day, so I would imagine he'd be 
ready to go okay. Tuesday. Um, big picture, um, Coach, I, I know you'll say the only pressure that really counts is the things that you guys say, or at least expectations, you know, within it. But your guys don't live in a bubble. They hear the, you know, the outside expectations. They hear the noise. How do they handle then the, the success of this past, you know, season and some of those expectations that go into it? Yeah, I don't, I don't sense it. You know, I've, I've said before, and we, we, we drill this into our players and our, our coaches, you know, with one-on-one -on -one talks with them all the time about, um, we know you're going to hear it. It's your choice whether you listen to it or not. It's a unique human skill, the skill of listening. And um, uh, so I, I, don't, I don't think it's very difficult when you break it down like that. We, we know that it's unavoidable that these guys are going to see and hear all of these messages. And in today's society, I mean, they're bombarded with messages. And, um, you know, it's, it's our job to, um, you know, continue to re reiterate the fact that, you know, we're playing for each other. Our job isn't to prove anybody wrong. It's, uh, it's our job to prove ourselves right to each other. Um, and then again, I, I think they, they really believe that the only people whose opinions of them matter are those guys in that team meeting room, the coaches and players. Beyond that, it's, it's noise. Yeah, Brian, unless I missed it, is Jake Smith not an option? Um, he certainly would have been, could have been, um, had the straights been more dire. I think it was, um, it was a wise move having Roshan knowing the offense, Roshan having been here an entire spring, um, his acclimation to it. Uh, you know, Jake's head's spinning just trying to play slot receiver right now. So we didn't, you know, he's our starting punt returner and all that stuff. So we didn't want to put that also on his plate um, and maybe we we get to that point at, at, at some point but right now it it wasn't necessary and then, um, I actually had this question about the schedule I mean so uh, go, starting this year and going forward uh, you guys begin a, uh, a schedule setup of a of a non power five team before a glamour what is perceived as a glamour game and <clears throat> talking to Talking to Chris, I mean, he likes that format, and I'm assuming you do too. Absolutely. I just wonder, what's what is what is your thinking about setting up almost every schedule going forward yeah. this way? Um, you know, it's 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 the one thing. You know, everybody wants to talk about expanding playoffs and and this, that, and the other. Um, some form of unified scheduling model across all conferences is something I think we need to tackle much sooner than worrying about the playoffs. You know, us in USC and was it 17 and 18 were the only two teams in the country that played 11 Power Five games. You know, and you've got teams in other conferences uh, only playing eight conference games and four non-Power Five schools. So, I mean, it's, it's you're comparing apples to oranges when you, you talk about schedule and toll on these kids' bodies, all of that stuff. So. Um, you know, the Big 12 mandates that you play one Power 5 uh, school a year plus our nine Power 5 conference opponents. So um, something I had expressed displeasure in as well that, um, you know, we're, we're, we're hurting ourselves if, if we're mandating all of these schedule issues, plus we play nine conference games. So, um, but if you are going to play nine conference games and, and one marquee non-Power 5 opponent or Power 5 opponent, uh, you certainly want to do it week two rather than, than week one to, um, so you're not having to prepare that way. So real quick, just so the, and that the perfect scenario is the non-Power 5 marquee and then, I don't want to say an easier opponent, but. Non-Power 5, non -power five. correct, and then conference schedule. Sorry. Back Hey, Coach, a couple of questions. One of them, Cade Brewer's status. And also, if how do you how did you come out of camp? Did you really get everything accomplished that you wanted to do out of the out of the preseason camp? Is there anything that you left off your checklist that you wanted to get done? No, I feel great about it, to be honest with you. Um, the checklist is great. Uh, Cade Brewer's fine. Um, dealt with a concussion deal last week, but he's been he's been cleared. Passed all the tests. Um, yeah, I, I don't. I don't think we were limited. I mean, 
Um, you know, we had to monitor the running backs reps significantly, but um, everything else, we, we got in what we wanted to. All right, Cedric. Tom, earlier this summer, you said the linebacking was a point that you definitely had an eye on. What would you see from those new guys in uh, uh, this next game coming up? What, is, what challenges does that present to that position? Yeah, I think, um, you know, obviously, Joseph Deli and and Jeffrey all had had really good fall camps. I was, you know, Marcus Tillman. We, we saw flashes of in the spring, and I was excited to see his next step uh, from a development standpoint. And and he certainly did not disappoint. Uh, and then Juwan and Caleb were were very pleasant surprises for me. Those those guys can can both play here. So um, although we do lose uh, Jeffrey after this year, he'll be the only one that we lose, and so we're excited about the future of that position. David Benda can really, really play. Um, you know, now going into this game, you know, you you just, you worry a little bit about, you know, you know, Delhi has, you know, ran down on kickoffs a, a few times or whatever it's been, but to be the starting middle linebacker and jog out there with the first team defense, um, you know, we're going to have to do a good job with him of, you know, making sure that he takes deep breaths and just go out there and do your job. Middle mic. Coach, you're looking forward to 1-0. and This is the culture that you're talking about. What stands out um, from Louisiana Tech, and what are you looking at their team? Uh, well, their quarterback, certainly. You know, he's, he's very experienced. Um, uh, the, the wide receiver I'm looking at, uh, Adrian Hardy, is a guy that could play um, anywhere in the country. And then... Uh, you know, they've, they've got Coach Diaco, uh, Bob Diaco is the defensive coordinator there now and um, uh, familiar with him from our time when he was at UConn and, and we were at University of Houston. So uh, he, he does a really good job on that side of the ball as well. Over here on your left, Kip. Tom, would you anticipate that Keontae or Jordan would be limited for Saturday? And what can you tell us about the cornerback situation and that battle and where it stands? Um, no, I don't know how you, I mean, there are only two, so I don't know how you limit both of them. I mean, or, or what that would even entail for a, um, a game. I know in practice they're in green jerseys. They're non-contact right now. Um, I, don't, I don't think the refs will let me put a green jersey on them in the game. Um, so we need them. They got to go. And then, uh, I'm sorry. Chip, what was the second part of your question? Yeah, right now, if um, if we started today, it would be Jalen Green and, and Kobe Boyce backed up by uh, Deshaun Jameson and Anthony Cook. But, uh, you know, in my opinion, Jalen um, has earned the right to, to consider him a, himself a starter. The other three guys are still going to battle out, you know, throughout this week. Tom, with, with Sam's style, mentality, a uh, little thin at the running back maybe, was there any discussions about, you know, don't try to do too much or, you know, we've got to have you for 13, 14 for, games? For three years there's been that discussion. <laughs> so um, uh, he, he's going to do what he d uh, Our job, um, you know, quarterbacks, it's always going to be a part of, of the run game based off of reads. I think we've done a nice job, again, as I told you in the spring, of you know we've take we've gone to more we've gone to less uh, you know run to run option based off reading a, an end or a linebacker to more run pass option um, so that he can get it out of get the ball out of his hands um, but he is I mean he is who he is and um, we're going to need him in the run game um, at key points during the season but you would like to keep his physicality to a minimum, um, and we talk a lot about it. In the middle, Ed? Coach, another Sam question. How big a luxury is it to have a guy like Sam back there? Because I know a lot of coaches are announcing their starting quarterbacks this week, some surprises. But how big of a luxury is it is to have Sam back there? And is he a de facto another coach back there for the offense? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a very underrated um, comfort. You know, we're never going to get complacent 
Um, but I think comfort is the, the right word and, and confident in, in what he can do. And, um, you know, it's a testament to Tim Beck and testament to the fact that he's been in the same offensive system for three years, had the same quarterback coach for three years. And so um, with that level of consistency, you know, he's been able to, to thrive uh, in that environment. And, yeah, I mean, he's, he's everything you want. I don't, I don't know if coach on the field is – we would ever say that, but um, he's pretty sharp and he's got a real control of the offense. Players and coaches have mentioned Tom Johnson's improved leadership. What does that do for the offense and this team? Uh, improved leadership? Just on the field and off the field with Colin Johnson. Oh, with Colin. Yeah, I mean, I've seen such a transformation in that young man um, physically, mentally. From a leadership standpoint, um, you know, it's Colin's always been a hard worker, but now he's really leading guys to come um, follow him in the way that he does things. And so, uh, obviously, he's it's more impactful on the offense because he, he does have um, he's around those guys a little bit more, but uh, everybody on the team really respects him. Friend on the left, James. Tom, is there a possibility we would see all? Four corners this weekend, or would you like the two that you exit the week with to be the guys that play all Saturday? No, yeah, there's there's possibility. I'm I'm, I'm not going to say that's off the table, but it's not something we have talked about yet. Question. Um, coach, as relates to I mean, you guys, didn't have any uh, you know blowout games last year per se, where you can play play a backup. But is there a, a, a thought process that you guys would like to get Casey Thompson as many reps uh, going forward, if possible? Yeah, I mean, if, if we're afforded to, I mean, we're not going to throw him in series three of the game just to do that. But um, yeah, I th we, we had multiple offensive linemen uh, play over a thousand game snaps last year, um, which is a lot, <laughs> a lot, a lot. Um, so, but we won 10 games and, and that's the goal is to win the game. So, uh, but if we have the luxury to play him, we're going to play him as soon as we feel like that, that time is upon us. All right, Jeff. You spoke earlier in camp about how I believe you said you have six offensive linemen you feel pretty good about right now, one, eight or nine. Have you found those last two or three yet over this, these past couple of weeks? No, it's a big question mark, to be honest with you. Um, we we got to grow up very quickly um, with those the next group of guys at that position. Brian? Um, how are you, uh, how do you feel about offensive line and who, who do you like the first five there? Oh, the first five? We haven't even decided yet, but it'll be some combination of uh, Sam Cosme, uh, Zach Shackelford, Junior Angi Lau, Derek Kerstead, or Denzel Okafor, or Parker Braun. So. No um, you know, like you said, it is game week, first week of the year, new year. What do you want this program uh, to do? In your mind, in your vision of Texas football this year, where do you want to go? Well, starting 1-0 and would be nice. Um, that's always the, the goal. But I, I, again, it, the, the big picture goal is never going to change around here. It's to be in the conversation for a conference championship in the months of November and December. And... Um, I think, you know, we're capable, of, certainly our best week in and week out is capable of doing that. Mm -hmm. Tom, there were times last year where you would mention, you know, team speed on offense or, you know, the skill position, just things here and there that you kind of wish you guys had. As, as you look at this roster and you've gotten to watch them through camp now, do you find yourself, you know, Realizing, hey, we need this, we need this, and, and you've got more of, of kind of what you need as you build. Well, I, I do know we're we're as fast as a, as a football team as we, we've been since we've been here, um, and we're as strong. So I don't I don't think there's really um, a, a glaring you know deficiency somewhere at, at a certain position or a cer certain skill set. Um, we talk every year. You don't have the luxury of a preseason game, even a, a scrimmage against another team. You watch Florida, Miami, and the cliche of teams don't win openers. They're lost because of mistakes. 
Is that something you guys just, it's nonstop kind of pounding home to everybody? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, usually the, the team in openers that plays the cleanest wins. And, and by that, you know, you're talking about penalties and turnovers um, and missed assignments. If you can keep those to a minimum, um, you're going to have a really good shot in, in, in game ones. But, yeah, I'd never heard that before, that there, more of them are lost than one, but that, that makes sense. Coach, we haven't seen or talked to you since uh, the passing of uh, Cedric Benson. Um, the team released that was going to honor him with the decals. Just your thoughts on uh, Ced and what it means to honor him and, and pay tribute to him in, in this way. Yeah, um, obviously, when you, you lose someone to an accident that young, um, you know, it's there's no other word than, than tragic uh, that comes to mind. and. Um, you know, Cedric was, was one of the best that's ever played here. And, um, you know, he's going to be missed by a lot. I thought, um, you know, our former players did a really good job of, of showing up to the, the funeral and, and paying their respects. But, um, yeah, we, we're thinking and praying for his family. And um, we also realize he's uh, one of the best that's ever played here. I was going to ask you about your special teams, where your punter is, and as far as your returners. Yeah, feel um, feel as, as good as I have um, with special teams. As you know, heading into the season, uh, since we've been here, uh, the punter's much more consistent uh, than he was last year. Now he he's obviously got to go do it in games too, um, when it counts. Um, and then the, the kicker, uh, you know. I love our kicker. I, I think he's he's fun to be around, which you don't say a whole lot of times about specialists. But uh, he, he, all those guys, they're great guys, great guys. Um, and then returners uh, right now would be um, Jake Smith at punt returner. Uh, and then we'd probably put Brandon, if it was a kill punt situation for the other team and had to make some split second decisions, we'd probably put Brandon Jones back there to. Um, you know, put your toes on the 10 or heels on the 10, whatever it is, and, and make di good decisions. And then uh, kick the two kickoff returners are Devin Smith and Jake, Jake Smith, or Devin Duvernay, Jake Smith. You're back, Anthony. A couple here, Coach. Again, um, personally, Coach, you're going for your 40th win here. Where are your juices and your energy right now as you, as you start this year, Coach? Uh, really high, you know, usually – Camp kind of uh, training camp can drain you a little bit. I think uh, one of the things that the NCAA did well uh, this year, uh, starting the, the week before your game, regardless of whether you start classes or not, you have to go to a 20 hour week uh, for uh, your team. You know, last year, year before, all the way up leading until this year, you know, today and tomorrow, we could have had a, a full, you know, full day training camp schedule where now we're, we're bound by the um, the 20 hour rule, which I think is good. But what it's also allowed us as coaches is to pause a little bit, um, you know, take a deep breath and um, get our energy back that that was, you know, lost throughout training camp. The road to the college football playoff starts this week, coach, trying to go back to New Orleans. It's not a one week thing, but what's your message to the fans to be a part of this journey and how much you need their support? Yeah, well, I, I think the message is one, you know, we thank you. Um, we're, we're so appreciative of, of the support that we get. I know as of this morning, we were 13 tickets away from setting the all time uh, season ticket record here. So um, we appreciate them and, and coming out to support us. and. And they have a direct impact on, on winning and losing. Um, you know, really, really loud, packed, intimidating crowds that, that has an effect on a, on a visiting uh, opponent. And uh, hopefully we can be as, as loud and as packed as anybody in the country this year. And then last, lastly, I, I saw the guys dancing and prancing with their Popeye's chicken sandwich. <laughs> did, did they share one with you, Coach? Have you I, had one of those things yet, Coach? I have. I have. I've had the spicy and the regular. <laughs>
two last ones in the middle, Jim. Uh, Coach, on the Joshua Moore suspension, his legal case could take several more weeks to resolve. Is that a one-game suspension, or could this go deeper? In the it's, you know, we're gathering information. We're, we're hoping the, the legal process is, um, you know, concluded soon. But, um, you know, I'll, I'll have to update you that on Monday because I, things could change. Correct. He will not suit up. Jeff, over here on the left. Last question. Tom, you talked about the familiarity with Coach Diaco, especially at an opener when you've got a coach that, that's at a new job. What do you break down in terms of yeah. what you study? How, how far back do you go? Do you look at Louisiana Tech stuff? Are you looking at Nebraska stuff or UConn stuff? Um, the position coaches, you know, they're, they're going to look at a lot of Louisiana Tech stuff uh, for personnel, you know, to give their, their guys um, – tips on the personnel but yeah we don't we don't spend a whole lot of time game planning um it, it's hard you know when when a guy is uh you know in, in an opener and the last time he coordinated was 2017 at nebraska so kind of just watching a little bit of of everything you know even some of the stuff at uconn to nebraska to even his time at at Oklahoma last year, you know, we, we broke down those films too. So uh, keeping the game plan uh, pretty tight in terms of the, the, the numbers of, of calls that, that we're going to rep and, uh, and have available to us uh, during the game because we just, we don't know, we're pretty, pretty unsure and we want to be able to have practiced them versus all of the different scenarios, fronts and coverages, as well as you know, be adaptable as, as the game goes on. Thanks, Thanks guys.